Hi, everybody. Today we're out at the uh, Fairport Fish Hatchery run by the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, correct? Yes. And I'm with Ken Snyder. Ken, uh, why don't you tell us your position? I, I'm the hatchery manager here. Uh, been here 30 years, not always as a hatchery manager, but uh, I'm the hatchery manager. have been running a hatchery here for the last seven years. So. Very good. You're going to take us on a little bit of a tour today. Let us know what uh, you guys accomplished successfully. and. Hopefully it's all successful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna go on a little bit of tour. Uh, uh, tell you kind of what we're what what's going on right now, and then what's gonna be going on later in the year. Sure. I'm gonna assume that this is a year-round facility. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we don't usually have too many fish in the winter time. I do hold a few fish over the winter. Uh, most of our, uh, our busy work is uh, during May and June. Uh, it's when we're really busy, and then in the fall and uh, September, late September and October when it cools down, we're really busy. But uh, May and June is our, our big months. Okay, so we're fortunate. We're at the end of April here as we're shooting this right now, and so we're at the at the beginning of the busy season. Yep. Tell you a little bit about the history of the hatchery. Um, originally, was uh, uh, Muscatine is well known for its um, uh, uh, pearl button industry. And back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the pearl button uh, manufacturers were having a hard time getting pearl buttons, uh, uh, clams for pearl buttons. Uh, they approached the federal government and asked them to do something about it. And they donated this property. 60 acres to the federal government with the stipulation that they would do some research on, on freshwater mussels. So the industry was already well established yes. and it sounds like maybe they were fishing it out. Or yes, that's, over, that's over what, what, what boiled down to is they were taking the clams faster than they were reproducing and so they wanted them to do something, uh, the federal government to do something about it. We're building the uh, Oh, 1908 is when they had dedicated the ground. They started building a lab uh, here, and uh, they had the first lab here, done some research on, on freshwater mussels, uh, found out uh, a lot of research, a lot of things that they didn't know about. And uh, uh, the first building was built over where the University of Iowa now has their building. It burnt down in 1914. They rebuilt it, uh, a big three-story brick building which was there then until 1973, and that, the federal government then tore it down. Uh, did a lot of research on freshwater mussels here, found out that, um, well, that they, they were just taking them too fast. Plus, plastic came in, started coming in in the 19, you know, 20s in that era. era. Uh, it was cheaper to make buttons out of plastic, and so that's when they started doing uh, fish culture here. Well, we, uh, we raise three main species of fish here at Fairport. Uh, walleye, largemouth bass, and bluegill. Uh, for instance, uh, right now it's walleye. Uh, I'm getting walleye fry in. My uh, walleye come in as fry from other hatcheries. Uh, fry being? Uh, just hatched fish. Okay. Okay, I have four ponds of walleye fry right now. Going back to the catfish that you were talking about, artificially spawning those, was that uh, meant to be for commercial purposes or was that a little of both. scientific research? A little, little, little of both because as you know the catfish uh, industry in the southern United States is very big and they wanted to uh, you know, be able to do that uh, commercially and also for stocking and sport fishing. 
Okay, then the largemouth, they're going? The largemouth go, a lot of them go to, uh, to uh, 70,000 of them will go to uh, uh, private farm ponds. We do have a farm pond stocking program, which get catfish and bluegill in the fall, and then the following summer get largemouth bass. They have to meet certain criteria. We just don't stock any pond. For instance, uh, uh, if they have, if they can't have any fish in them. They have to be either a new pond or a renovated pond or, or a killed out pond for some reason. A lot of the newer hatcheries now use plastic line ponds. Uh, because you don't get the mud, you don't, and, and you, you're uh, more consistent, okay? You know exactly what goes into the pond, what's got what there. Uh, the downside is, is a, in a, a, a plastic line ponds, you don't get any nutrients from the bottom. Uh, you, but, you know, we have lots of weeds and vegetation and stuff, so, you know, there's, there's up, up and downside there. Uh, okay, Ken, um, you're a state-run uh, agency here. Mm -hmm. What types of things can the general public do to enhance your efforts? Uh, you spoke earlier about being short staff, volunteers. Yeah, yeah if, volunteers, we'll take anybody who wants to volunteer. Uh, you know, what uh, types of activities would they help you with? You know, it, it depends. Uh, you know, uh, we're, all, we're always mowing grass, it seems like. And, and at time, like, say, in May and June, we were busy draining ponds and moving fish, we, we, the grass gets out of hand. And there's also times when we're draining ponds that uh, I need help. Just extra hands. Just extra hands because if we're draining a pond and, and delivering fish at the same time, somebody has to be on the road. Sure. So then it was short staff draining sure. ponds. Uh, for instance, I get help from the local folk ag here in Muscatine uh, when, during school that they come out sometimes and help. That doesn't help you at the end of June. But either. that doesn't help yeah. me in May and June, although I have a, another folk ag uh, guy that's volunteered and said, hey, you call me anytime, summertime or whatever, and I'll get some kids out for you. So uh, anything like that, you know, we, we, we need all the help I get. Um, because we're, we're, even though we're a state agency, uh, we don't get our money from state taxes. We get it from the fishing license okay. uh, fees. And so uh, I know state governments was cut some. We, we were actually cut even higher more than state government this year. It's a percentage. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, I, my budget was cut 7.5%. Okay, so, so maybe it would be something like a person could uh, purchase a fishing license, whether they plan on using the license yeah, to fish or not. Yeah, that'd be great. That's that'd be great. That would, that would help. You know, anything like that. Uh, uh, donated labor, donated, you know, anything that we could use. Could I